Hey, Ed, how are you? Very well, thank you. So we'll give it a couple minutes for folks to turn up. Does some, would someone like to share the issue board? Thank you. Much appreciated. Shall we get going? Yep. Cool. So starting over on the going left to right, because normally you'll move cards right to left. So if you start left to right, you don't end up having to review the same thing twice. Um, so looks like we've got a, a ad root wire guard remote mechanism uh, PR open here, Denise. I know you and I have been convincing back and forth about this. Um, is there? Anything you'd like to say about it here, or I would encourage more folks to get involved in the conversation. Oh yes, I face it with some problems, and uh, I have described uh, these problems into PR. Cool. I think this is the PR to the API repo, though. Oh yep. Uh, I've started to migrate uh, WireGuard uh, mechanism into uh, split repo. Cool. No, that's excellent. Um, API conversations are, are tend to be a lot crisper than, than others. So this is good. This is definitely good. Um, <clears throat> cool. I was muted. <laughs> awesome. And then we've got create network service registry client, add a pod name, node name, cluster name, links to registration. Um, has that, I, I, I feel like that one has gone in. Am I misremembering? 
Um, yep, some info already budget. Okay, cool. So I'll go and ahead and some info that. is not. Yep, I'll go ahead and close that. Uh, thank you very much, Sergey. I make sure I'm not confused. People who have fun GitHub names, I sometimes get them confused at first. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and just in general, by the way, um, Sergey, thank you so much. You've been doing a lot of small pushing of tests for things that have been just awesome. Cool. All right, so move fan out plug into core DNS repo. Denise, how is that going? I know that's a different repo entirely, but. Oh, this is still under review uh, on core DNS site. Uh, guys from core DNS are uh, very slow reviewing my PR. I have responded all uh, their comments. And I think we should wait for new feedback from their side. Okay, let's keep an eye on it. Um, sometimes people just get busy and get distracted. So um, if, it, if it goes too much longer without them responding, we may need to poke them in some way. So, but they, that seems to be going very well. Cool, so um, moving on then to in progress, um, do you want to talk more generically about the WireGuard stuff, Denise? Uh, you mean uh, wire, uh, wire guard for VPP agent forwarder issue? Uh, yes, yes. Very oh, for, th for this issue, I have provided two PRs with uh, two uh, potential solutions. Uh, the first PR with number 2110, this PR. Uh, uh, you can uh, open this PR uh, if you uh, go into the issue. Yes, uh, the first uh, PR 2110. 20, uh, this PR um, provides uh, a solution with uh, adding simple uh, Eldova uh, frame as adapter. Uh, in short, uh, it allows uh, using Eldova traffic for wire guard device. And uh, this uh, solution passes all tests. Uh, but we have some trick. Oh, yes, yeah. it is a uh, trick. Uh, I just uh, wrap it uh, uh, an interface uh, for tune of uh, WireGuard device. Yeah, I, I seem to recall that you have a really good diagram somewhere for that, but yes. I'm not sure if it's here. Yeah, it's probably not there. Oh, uh, can you search tune uh, dot go? Oh, that's it. But uh, I talk about a diagram. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in short, uh, it uh, just uh, adds uh, IP header into any uh, received. Uh, Packets and on uh, receiver side, uh, we just remove this uh, IP header, and it is working. <laughs> but it it uh, looks like a trick, but uh, can be used uh, for a, a temp uh, solution. Cool. Maybe we can uh, make it as uh, environment variable configurable. Oh, sure. we can uh, also uh, I have provided a second PR uh, this PR uh, provides alternative solution uh, with uh, VPP agent via uh, level 3 cross connects and with uh, this uh, PR I face it with uh, an expected problem uh, I have described the problem into comments. The comments of APR? Yes. And uh, the main problem is that uh, WireGuard device receives uh, wrong uh, uh, packets from uh, MIMIF uh, interface. Uh, and uh, I think uh, to figure out uh, this problem, uh, I need uh, to run a more, sm more uh, small 
uh, example with uh, uh, L3 cross connects. And uh, I tried to uh, find some examples, uh, but I did not find. Uh, that's why uh, I, I have asked it, uh, about examples uh, of. Uh, yes, did you have a chance to find a forum or a Slack yes, channel? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I have. I have ask. asked. Uh, I have asked uh, guys from VPP agents uh, via their forum, and I just wait uh, their uh, feedback. Okay. Um, I'll also have a look and see what you're sort of running up against. It's it's into that space where it, it turns out sometimes actually having um, fairly serious network chops, you know, gives you hints as to the kinds of things that could go wrong. Cool. All right. So. Um, Anything else on WireGuard? Oh, uh, also uh, PR uh, with uh, changes for uh, kernel forwarder uh, is uh, ready to merge. Cool. Um, Any way to add it here in projects? Yeah, you should, you should be able to add it to the projects here. Oh, it, it is... Uh, here you can uh, just move uh, to the second issue. It has the second name. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. Yes, and you can uh, take a look at the PR. Okay. Going forward there. Okay. It's already. I think could be merged. Yep. Most of you guys already pushed. Yeah, okay. Nice. Uh, I think we have a question here about uh, switching to the new version of the VPP agent. Denise also prepared a pull request with it. And it has just a few tests failed, so we can check. Uh, to log in, not sure why it's disconnected. Okay. Is it you have a chance why VPP tests are filed for this pull request? Oh, yes, sure. Uh, I did not look at this because uh, I, I just uh, uh, provided this for uh, testing uh, wire guard stuff is uh, level three cross connects. Uh, at, uh, sh should we uh, use uh, move our repo to using uh, VPP agent uh, version three? Uh, if it seems to work, yes. It's got um, several things that are actually fixed in it, um, and, and and it varies. You know, it varies in, in several areas. One of the, the things that, that frankly is, uh, I, I tend to like things that are nice and clean. Uh, and one of the things that it actually fixes is we no longer need the replace line, the Satori stuff um, in VPP uh, uh, 3.0.1, which makes me super happy because that's just really annoying. Um, so yeah, I mean, if it passes tests, I would actually uh, look at that, making that leap. Okay, we will check in this case why we VPN tests are failed. Uh, yeah. Check the fix and it, switch to a new version, yeah. Yeah, and if there's actually a legitimate problem, then we want to get that back to them sooner rather than later. Yep. So. Cool. Uh, cool. Wait to edit it. Cool. All right. So, um, awesome. So let's see the uh, monitor stuff. How is that going 
Andre? Uh, I'm mostly ready with it, just uh, trying to make a good testing solution for such network, uh, for, for such uh, chain elements. Uh, as a temporary yep. solution, I use uh, switch to a new API for uh, our entire ne network service mesh repo. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 I don't follow how that's related. So for the, the monitor chain element stuff to go into SDK, I don't see how that's related to uh, anything in the, the mono repo. No, uh, I mean to use the our mono repo as a testing bed uh, to some of the chain elements uh, because uh, without a real tests like integration tests for a VP, 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 VP agent, it's actually uh, hard to test some parts of functionality. For example, uh, in case of uh, metrics, I just need uh, to connect to real VPP agent to be sure if all interface uh, names are matched uh -huh. and so on. Okay, now that, that, that's actually, that, that does get to be true when we get to the level of integration, no question. Um, but one of the other nice things about uh, the VPP uh, 3.0.1 when we make that switch um, is that, um, and we should probably switch the SDK VPP agent sooner rather than later, and it's probably simpler there, um, is that um, it, it uses the gRPC client connection interface rather than gRPC client connection which means that you can literally mock the whole thing out for unit testing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, and which, which that makes me so happy it's almost impossible to explain. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> um, you may also want to take a look at some of the things that have been landing in the last week in terms of, of sort of the, the style of testing of things. There's been a lot of very things that make certain kinds of testing very, very simple. Um, uh, of, yeah, uh, I've seen some mm -hmm. some of the stuff and has some concerns uh i think sergey used a similar approach as you uh, implemented to his decay to some of the chain elements and uh i think he prepared a pull request with the context uh check let, let me check so simplify it a bit uh and use it uh Okay, did you remember which which one you use? Uh, we wanted to use to pass uh, some special context mm -hmm. instead of uh, having some uh, uh, assertions inside of uh, the chain itself, just to uh, fill uh, context with our values. Not sure if it's in this pull request or not, and do assertions right after we do a request. Yeah, because then you can tell the individual piece is actually doing its job. Um, now, you, when you get up to integration, you may decide, you may discover that the, the piece needed to do a slightly different job and you can come back and fix that. Um, but there's also been a bunch of stuff that makes a lot of that easier. Um, I, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in the community meeting here when we have a bit more time uh, than we do in this meeting. Um, because I've, there's a bunch of things that have landed that make it easy to uh, check things before and after uh, to inject various things, um, that kind of stuff. Okay, I could not find it at the moment. Okay, we'll check and uh, send you a link. So Gail already did the changes that you requested. That's why you didn't recognize the code. You're looking at it. No, no, no. Uh, we discussed about it passing some values using the context to the client and passing it to a request. Well, he chose uh, another way to implement this. We, he, made, uh, he makes assertions right after the request without using context, I guess. Ah, okay. Yeah, I mean, it kind of depends on which piece of thing you're testing. I mean, if you inject a background context, uh, then you can extract the, whatever's been added to it from it. Um, but again, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the stuff that, that I did for testing for mechanisms. Um, because what, what Sergey did here is great, um, but what I discovered as I was writing more and more tests is that it was more repetitive work than it needed to be, and you could still keep things very semantically clear and simple um, in other ways. Um, not in other ways, but basically by, by making some of the stuff that, that's being done here 
um, simple and repeatable. Um, but yeah, this, this, is, this general have something before, have something after, uh, check what goes in, check the values kind of, of testing, gives you some notion of whether the individual piece is doing its thing. So. So I, again, I was muted. Uh, I was mm -hmm. not agreed with this kind of solution. Like we have a, a special server with a test function and mm -hmm. we do assertions inside of this test function. Mm -hmm. So better to do a request and do some checks uh, after request is complete and use a context as um, some holder to pass some values from the internals. Yeah, it, it, if we need. It, it, it will depend somewhat. Yeah. Um, so for example, if I pass a context in, the nature of context is that they wrap each other. So if I pass a context into a request, then the subsequent context that that request passes to the next chain element is not the same context that I passed in. And in fact, the context that I passed in is going to be not have any additional values added to the context passed to the next element. Now for some things, like the BPP agent context, where its contents are a pointer. Um, you know, that should we, uh, should we always use with value with a parent context? I'm sorry, what? Uh, as I check it, uh, we, we use uh, uh, the context with value with a parent context. So we should uh, inherit one context uh, from a parent one. You do, you do. But if I pass the parent, if I pass context one into my call, and my call is a chain element, and it goes and you know then adds something, you know, cre adds a value. That value is added to context two, which has a parent of context one. So I can get the value from context two, but I cannot get the value from context one. Yeah, yeah, but you could take some pointers, some to some internal uh, structure for a test. For certain things, and we, and we do yeah. that for PPP agent. We definitely do. Um, you know, and you know, you, you run into some other, you know, various things, but I, I think the point you're making is that for some use cases, this is overcomplicating. Yep. Um, you know, there are use cases where you can simply, you know, pass in values and then check that values come out on the other end. Um, and that's entirely possible that that's true. Um, so, and I, I'd like to try and keep things as simple as we can. So I, I appreciate you calling it out in the places where I've actually made things harder because you get into a group with a pattern and you overcomplicate the pattern. So. Yeah, okay. Um, cool. Also um, I created a few to-dos, like move an SM init and SM monitor. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think this is good. I, I think we should probably have conversations and, and perhaps the community meeting is a better place for those like, conversations about the naming of repos. Um, yep. Because the, the, I had one set of, of patterns in mind and then it's perfectly valid that people have other ideas. And as we sort of have seen repeatedly, often the ideas that come from the synthesis of many thoughts end up being better. Uh, you, have, you do not want to know what the NSM logo would have looked like if I was the one, who, the only one involved in that conversation, it would have been hideous. Um, so <laughs> and instead we have something that kicks ass. Um, so yeah, we definitely want to talk about that, but I've already started a little bit of that um, with the command forwarder or VPP agent yep. um, repo. Um, and and I, I think probably what we want to do is just figure out what is the same pattern. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, because once, once, you've got it, once you've established the same pattern, then it becomes super easy to get the naming right. Um, and, and patterns also help human brains process things and put them in context. Um, yeah, so that's also good. Um, trying to think what else. Oh, yeah, so so basically, I, I've queued up a bunch of stuff in the agenda to talk about some of the testing in more detail. Um, and and I, I, okay, so we got that. And then on those to-dos, yeah, da, da, da. To find and implement example test OPA use cases. Okay, so is there anything else that folks feel like we need to talk about in this call? Oh, we, we skipped over a few things actually because we skipped from monitor to the to dos. Um, you, you talked about monitors and metrics. 
Um, Radoslav, how are we doing on the, do we have Radoslav? We don't have Radoslav. Okay, so we, 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 we don't have him, Radoslav, to talk about the Colonel Forder. Uh, Zemek, is there anything you'd like to say about the SROV stuff? Uh, no updates, only questions. Hi. Uh, yeah, I presume, uh, I mean, some time ago, uh, I asked about um, some kind of end-to-end -end example of the new style repos uh, when it comes to forwarders and requesting uh, connections. Uh, so I'm not sure what's the current status. Oh, uh, yes, yes, I, uh, I, re I recall that ask. That, that's what's actually coming together right now in the uh, order VPP agent. So it, it, it's, if you want to go take a look at that, um, we haven't yet landed things like the, the testing that's local to that repo, but it'll give you some idea of sort of the simplicity of some of that stuff. And there's some stuff on the agenda to point to that as well. Um, but that at least gives you something to start looking at to get some idea. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm, I'm also assuming that uh, some part of the uh, current SROV proof of concept PR uh, would go to the yes to be created command for for other kernel repository or something like that. So, for the, for the web repository, uh, I'm dedicated uh, kernel for other repository for the common yeah, application. I, I think it's probably true that some of it does belong in the kernel. Uh, uh, sorry, the the kernel forwarder repo, SDK, uh, the SDK kernel repo, um, and then some of it will land in the 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 command kernel forwarder, a forwarder kernel, um, or it's command, probably it's command forwarder SROV that it would land in. But do, do go take a look at what's landing and starting to land in the PRs and the command forwarder um, VPP agent, because it, it, what's there is very, very minimal. It's basically just a main that, call, that creates a server. Um, yeah, if you want to go to the pull requests, because I'm trying to find out where the CI is not running right now, which is why the pull request hasn't been merged. But if you go look at the initial commit of the code and then just scroll down to the main.go file. There we go. Yeah, I mean, effectively all it's got is set up a signal, things I'll need to catch the signal, set up something for when we need to stop, um, extract some various things with Viper as parameters and then queue up the arguments to something that just creates a new cross connect NS server and then run the stupid server and wait for signals. So that's literally 100% of the Go code in um, the command repo right now. And I expect it's probably going to be roughly that going forward. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess I can start working on something like that for SROV. Still this yeah, course. I mean, at the very least, start taking a look and see if it makes sense for you for SROV. <laughs> Um, because the patterns are good, and but sometimes patterns, despite our best intentions, don't always fit every circumstance, right? So um, I have this thing I call the no unnatural uh, acts law, a rule, which is, it's great if you want to go take a look and try and follow the patterns. If you find yourself working too hard to follow the patterns, maybe they're not the right patterns for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Cool. Now we're right up against the top of the hour. I think we should probably go jump on the community meeting. Is there anything else urgent before we do? Mm, I think just the Azure issue. We still uh, have problems with it. It is disabled in a uh, mono repo at the moment. And I, we have issue in the Azure community. I just dropped some email to some folks I know on the inside of Azure, uh, pointing them at that issue um, and see, hopefully that'll get a little bit more attention. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Talk later.